Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to chapter 20. Uh, we're talking about the different uh, organ systems in uh, animals. Uh, remember that the levels of organization is the smallest thing that can be considered alive as a cell. I take similar cells and I put them together and I get tissues. I put tissues together and I get organs. I put organs together and I get organ systems. Those cells are working together doing the same job to make a tissue. Those tissues are working together to accomplish a goal in making an organ. Those organs are working together to accomplish a larger goal to make an organ system. Our next organ system is the skeletal system. Its job is to support us. Its job is to hold us up and to protect us. Um, its main job is support to be a rigid scaffolding to hang all this soft tissue off, off of. But its second job is to be uh, defense. There are three main organs whose job it is, excuse me, three main bones whose job it is to protect sensitive organs. You can probably guess the first one. The first one would be your skull. The skull's job is to protect the brain, and it is a hard case that protects the brain because of how sensitive the brain is. The next one are, is the rib cage, and this is several bones that are working together to protect two organs, and that is the heart and the lungs. The breastbone, your sternum, is a plate. It's literally a shield that goes right here, and your heart is literally right underneath of it. There's only a little bit of the heart that sticks out beyond the sternum, beyond this breastbone. It is a hard plate over the top of the heart, again, to protect it against being um, poked. All right? Your lungs are protected by this cage called your ribs. The ribs, why isn't this a hard case? Why is this a cage? Why can I protect my skull in a case? Why can't I protect my ribs in a case? And the answer is, it's because the ribs, the way they function, is they allow for expansion and contraction. They allow you to expand and to contract this thing we call the thoracic cavity so that we can change the air pressure in our chest cavity so we can bring air in and to force air out. That's why it's a cage, not a case. Our last set of bones that protect a sensitive organ is our spinal column. The job of our vertebrae is to be, again, another cage to protect our very sensitive spinal cord. And of all of these things, you know, we've heard of people, we've probably known someone who had an accident and their back was broken and it literally cut their spinal cord. It failed in its job because the stress was just too much. It was too big of a force that it can only do so much. Uh, the skeletal system. Protecting the brain, heart, lungs, and spinal cord. Um, it's also a framework for hanging muscles off of. We talked about that too. It, remember in the last video we talked about how the muscles, the way you get goosebumps, is the muscles that attach to your hair follicles actually pull the skin down. It's because they don't have anything firm to pull against. That's what the skeletal system is for your skeletal muscles. It provides something hard to pull against. The bicep is connected to my humerus up here, which won't move in this case. And it connects down here to my ulna, which will move. So when I contract my bicep, it pulls my arm to my shoulder. All right? It's connected to two places, a place that doesn't move, in a place that does. Of course, my upper arm can move, but for this action, this upper arm does not move. It connects at two places. And so what the skeletal system does, it provides a firm platform, a rigid structure for muscles to work against. So all of the energy that they go into moving can be applied, can be turned into moving the body and not just wasted by moving, pushing soft stuff around. The muscle system wouldn't go very far. It wouldn't work very well without the skeletal system. We just said a little while ago, all of these systems work together. None of them work alone. They all work with other systems to keep you alive. 
The job of the muscular system is to move you and to move stuff throughout your body. Um, a second thing that it does, not only is it for moving me, but it's also for maintaining posture. Posture is keeping us upright. Let's face it, we're standing around, we're moving around on two sticks. How long does it take babies, how long does it take toddlers to learn to walk? The walking part is easy. The not falling part is hard. It takes a long time to learn to operate the body to keep us upright to maintain posture so that we don't fall over. And even when you're just sitting in a chair, when you saw Grandpa fall asleep in the chair at Thanksgiving, how'd you know Grandpa was asleep? Aside from his mouth hanging open and snoring. But it was that his head had drifted back and lolled over to the side. He wasn't holding his head up anymore. You can watch your dog fall asleep, you can watch your cat fall asleep, and you know they're asleep because what happened to the head? They stop maintaining posture. And they let go of those muscles that hold the neck upright. The last job of the muscular system is to produce heat. I understand we live, most of us live in South Georgia, and therefore we really don't need that job of producing heat. Maybe it's too good at his job. But this ability that muscle has to produce heat, we actually make quite good use of it to, make, to keep us active year-round. Um, think about snakes. Think about bugs in the wintertime. You don't see snakes and lizards in the winter. You don't see bugs in the winter because they can't stay warm. We use our muscles to keep us warm. Um, we actually use about 90% of our energy is wasted making heat, keeping us warm, give or take. Eh, 90% is too big, closer to 60%. Urinary system obviously is for removing metabolic wastes. The urinary system, um, uh, the foods that you eat, you have, you cut off nitrogen compounds, those nitrogen compounds get turned into urea. Urea is what makes urine smell like urine. Not only does the urinary system remove metabolic waste, but the urinary system will also regulate the makeup of your blood. It regulates the pH of your blood. It regulates um, the water balance of your blood. It regulates what stays in your blood. So if it regulates what stays in your blood, one of its primary jobs is it actually influences your blood pressure. By determining what's in your blood, it determines how much water is in your blood, and that determines influences how much blood you have, and how much blood you have, therefore, influences what your blood pressure is. The urinary system is actually one of the strongest ones, one of the most important ones for regulating blood pressure. Our digestive system is obviously for bringing in energy and building blocks. We think about we eat food because we need energy to operate, we need energy to move around uh, the world, but we also take this food in to build our bodies. Um, as adults, it's not as important as it is as kids. But uh, one reason why teenage boys are eating like horses is because what are they doing between the ages of about 15 until 20? And the answer is they're putting on mass. They're putting on muscle mass. Why are they eating like horses? They're eating like horses because they need the raw materials. They don't just need the energy. They need the building to be able to construct that body mass, those muscles that they're growing, that they're making. So the digestive system uh, helps us to bring in food, to break it down, to absorb those nutrients, and then to get rid of the waste. Uh, obviously, that is the job, the last job of your digestive system is to get rid of the waste. Urinary system helps us regulate uh, the composition of our blood and therefore the composition of all of our body fluids. The digestive system is all about um, helping us to get the energy from the food that we eat and um, using that energy to build the materials that we need out of the stuff that was our food, out of the building blocks of the food that we eat. And then lastly, for getting rid of the uh, waste when we're done with the stuff, when we've gotten as much out of it as we possibly can. 